Well, in case you haven't heard, it's an election year. And that means plenty of people are out to fool you and me. Not just with false campaign promises, there might be a few of those floating around, but also with a new technology that could change political races in this country forever. I'm talking about artificial intelligence or AI. You may have heard about people using AI services like ChatGPT or OpenAI to write emails or to enhance internet searches. There are also many great ways to use AI. I've used it to help me reach the Hispanic community. I don't speak fluent Spanish, but for me to be able to allow my Spanish speaking viewers to see important interviews from former President Donald Trump to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, I didn't need to speak Spanish or use Spanish subtitles or even an interpreter. AI was able to make me into a fluent Spanish speaking journalist. You won't believe how real it looks and sounds. Take a look. La semana pasada, 12 jurados deliberaron y emitieron un veredicto culpable de 34 cargos de falsificación de registros comerciales contra Donald Trump. No cuestiona su toma de decisiones y la confianza en ellas cuando hay tantas críticas de medios de comunicación y líderes mundiales. Miren, a la comunidad internacional no pueden, por un lado, hablar del derecho de Israel a ejercer la autodefensa. Now, I've generated that, but haven't used it yet because I'm wrestling back and forth. I think it's important to take down language barriers for certain populations, but I think you have to use safeguards. Like on that clip, we have translated or generated by AI. I think it's important if you do that to engage the viewer where they have to click at least and acknowledge, I understand that this is a translation AI for my convenience. I think you have to affirmatively have them say, I understand this, because I don't want anybody to be confused. I'm not trying to impress anybody that I all of a sudden speak fluent Spanish or that Prime Minister Netanyahu does. But AI is also being used to create damaging defamatory content, like using someone's real photos to create fake images of them engaging in a crime or taking a recording of someone's real voice and manipulating it to make them say something offensive. It's called deep fakes. And some of them are done so well, you would think they were real. And it's not just online trolls doing this. Both Democrats and Republicans have used AI in political attacks. Some lighthearted, others not so nice. This just in, we can now call the 2024 presidential race for Joe Biden. I was selected because I am the ultimate diversity hire. I'm both a woman and a person of color. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald Trump. Your vote makes a difference in November, not this Tuesday. Well, some of those images you just saw were created by the Center for Countering Digital Hate, a nonprofit organization working to stop the spread of online hate and disinformation. Imran Ahmed is the organization's CEO. His recent report, Fake Image Factories 2, How Midjourney is Failing to Prevent the Creation of AI Images that Threaten Elections, calls for urgent measures to combat misinformation and hold tech companies accountable. So, Imran, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. This is a big deal, right? I think this is a game changer. And we've seen over the past few years a, a sort of a growth in the amount of lies in our politics. Uh, we've always had politicians who lie. No. But what we've seen now <laughs> is a radical shift in which there are in fact, lies as sort of the, the, the sheer bulk of them almost outweigh the truth. 
Right. And that's making it more and more difficult for voters to make a legitimate choice. Look, here's the truth. We have a right to make a decision, to hold our opinions, and they are protected by the First Amendment, on, on candidates. But we want to know that we are, we are holding those opinions based on facts and on truths. And every time someone spreads a lie, spreads disinformation, spreads a fake image or fake audio of someone, that actually takes away that most sacred and fundamental right. It makes a mockery of it. And we're seeing that grow and grow over time. And now we're seeing AI. Gosh, the, the cost of production of one of these things is literally zero. And then the cost of distributing it to potentially millions tens of millions, hundreds of millions of American people, and billions around the globe is again zero. And that's a charter for bad actors. Well, that is a problem. It seems to me like you say that politicians lie, they exaggerate, they manipulate. And that's one thing where we can look at that and we can fact check if we want to. A lot of that's on us. But then if we've got them appearing to say something, that they didn't actually say, that's a whole different level. You know, 20 years ago, if a politician lied, there were journalists whose job it was to show their lies to the public. And frankly speaking, like when someone's caught in a lie, it used to be a big problem. Now there's a tidal wave of disinformation that is overwhelming us. We keep being told you should check your sources, you should fact check. I'm theoretically an expert on these things, but I don't have the time to do that. And that becomes really, really problematic when you're talking about a system in which you can be sitting next to someone and they might hold a belief which is based on a lie, a deep fake, which is completely bonkers that someone was doing something terrible, that they were cheating on their wife, that they committed a crime, done something terrible. And of course, they've got no basis in fact whatsoever. And that actually, it fractures our society even more. Like we, I think we've all had enough of Christmases or Thanksgivings where you can't talk to five members of the family around the table because they say something completely bonkers. We'd like to have a little bit more truth and a little bit less lies in our politics.